Good morning, good afternoon, good evening traders, wherever you are in the world, I hope you're doing well, I hope you're safe, I hope you're healthy, I hope you've got a big smile on your face, and I hope you're catching pips as usual. Pips of Persia here with another educational case study. In today's video, we're going to be speaking about top-down analysis, how to decide on a higher time frame such as daily and weekly bias, and see if lower time frame also agrees with your bias. Areas of imbalance, that has been um, one of the biggest kind of questions since I've been posting all of the other videos. Uh, everyone's been asking about imbalance. In today's video, I'm not going to go ahead and break down properly what an imbalance is. Eventually, we'll get around to doing that, but I'm going to be showing areas of imbalance and how you can use them in your analysis. Using institutional candles for entries also is going to be another concept that we are going to be speaking about today. Uh, manipulations, whether that be support, resistance or trend line manipulations, market structure, especially hand in hand with the manipulations that we identify on the financial market. And uh, very briefly, I'll be speaking about hedging, the idea behind hedging and why as, um, let's say, a retail trader, someone who's trading with their own capital, um, you might want to in the future learn how to hedge correctly. Again, I'm not going to do a whole training on hedging, but we're going to be speaking about why you would want to consider it. So let's go ahead and jump straight into it. Um, we are looking at Australian dollar versus US dollar. Um, I'm going to be showing three screenshots, one on the weekly time frame, one on the hourly and one on the five minute time frame. All of these screenshots were taken on 9th of October 2020. So it's over three weeks ago that I took these pictures. Currently is 3rd of November 2020 at 8 p.m. UK time. So all of these pictures were taken just over about three weeks ago. So um, let's go ahead and break things down, starting from the first screenshot, the weekly time frame. So on the 9th of October, on the weekly time frame, if anyone looked at AUDUSD and saw the same thing that um, I did, that a lot of other traders did as well, then congratulations to you. You are getting closer and closer to being able to identify the charts from a not so common standpoint that not a lot of traders would actually use. What was very clear on the weekly time frame for AUD USD was two things. Number one, we have created an institutional candle and number two, we have created an imbalance. So again, I'm not going to speak too much about imbalance, but if you know how what an imbalance is and how you identify it, then this is not only a very clean imbalance, but it's also on the weekly time frame, making it definitely a very powerful level that this market will be pulled towards filling in. So it was almost obvious that this market can pull back to not only mitigate out of this institutional candle, but also fill in this imbalance. That was the idea behind the weekly time frame. There's a few other things that has been written over here as well. That's the imbalance or insufficient price action that we were looking at at that area. Um, and this is the weekly drop base drop. So you can consider that on the weekly time frame as a drop base drop formation where the market has dropped found the base, that was the drop, this was the base, and continued this drop, making that level an area of supply. I've written demand up there, that should have been supply, but yeah, this is what I mean, the weekly supply level. Um, so hence why it was likely to see the market react to that specific level um, on the weekly time frame. So now that we have the higher time frame buyers, where on the weekly time frame, we were expecting this market to react off of this purple zone. I'm going to have to get rid of a lot of things. I'm just going to do this for now, but that's the weekly imbalance that we were looking at. So once we have approached that level, that's where we should have been looking for sell positions to take this down from that area of imbalance on the weekly time frame. So that's the first piece of analysis. That's the first thing that we see on the weekly time frame. And I have identified uh, multiple different targets on the weekly time frame as well. But again, this is the weekly time frame. These targets are very far from the price. So it doesn't mean that we have to see the market approach our targets before we close positions. Of course not, because chances are before that we'll be able to find some phenomenal trades. Now, here's the thing. If we were expecting this market to move up, close this imbalance and then move down, then we can potentially look to hedge certain positions. Meaning what? We want to be buying on the way up to then sell it back down. Because the idea is this, if you're in a buy position as this market moves up, so you're in a buy position as this market comes up to your sell level. By the time it reaches that sell level, so long as you have done a calculated buy position, then those positions are probably risk-free. So you have broken them even, you have maybe even closed certain positions from there. And if this market continues going up from there, you continue to make your money from those buy positions. But if you're on the right side of the market where you were expecting a reversal and a sell position, then you will go ahead and execute that sell position there and then. 
with the advantage that if this market is going to continue going higher and your sell positions are going to hit stop loss, the money that you would lose, you would almost instantly gain from those buy positions to the upside. Vice versa, if this market is going to move down, your buy positions are already at, broken, uh, at break even, so you don't even have to worry about them. The market is going to take you out at break even for those buy positions, and these sell positions is going to give you the profit. So either way, it's as if you are making yourself even a little bit more secure to these markets. But obviously, there's calculated ways to hedge. It's not like we buy and sell it at the same time. No, we have to see a lot of things before we decide to hedge in this market. But a good example on how to go ahead and hedge in this market is going to be what we're going to speak about today, um, which is which brings us to the hourly screenshots. So AUDUSD on the 60 minute time frame. That's what we're going to be looking at now. The picture that I have I have drawn over here on the on the hourly time frame is again a simple imbalance field and the market moving up above the previous highs. So here's how I want you to look at this on the hourly time frame. Down here, that's your low. High, higher low, higher high. Higher low, higher high. So this is your typical um, bullish structure. And this final low that was created, it wasn't any random level. It filled in an hourly imbalance before moving higher. So let's go ahead and look at this again on the hourly time frame the same picture. So this low down here is that low. And even, even this initial low that was created over here on the four hour time frame, that was also another imbalance fill. That was also an area that the market filled in that imbalance. So it was either four hour or eight hour. There we go, it's that eight hour imbalance. Tiny little imbalance that the market closed before moving higher. Looking at that same structure, looking at that same level, once this market started to form this bullish trend and started to go higher and higher, this is where we filled in this imbalance again before creating a new high. Now, this video is gonna be, as I said, a little bit more educational. What I mean by that is we're not gonna necessarily break down um, trade scenarios. This is where I want you to understand market behavior. We've done a lot of you know, trading scenarios where I have broken down a lot of different positions that we have taken on all of the previous videos. If you haven't watched them, go on and watch those. You literally on a lot of them see before and after pictures as well. In this specific case, I want to help you to read market behavior on your own. So when you're analyzing the charts independently, you can analyze them on your own. You don't have to wait for another source. Does that make sense? So this is why we're going to be speaking about this specific move up. Because once this picture was taken, once that hourly imbalance was filled in, this imbalance down here, this is where the market started to form a reaccumulation schematic before visiting higher prices. And that's the final screenshot on the five minute time frame. This is the, um, uh, the reaccumulation schematic that this market formed before visiting higher prices. This could be your preliminary supply. I haven't, I haven't written it out, but that's your preliminary supply. Buyer's climax, that's your elements of that sign of weakness to the downside or even some form of shakeout. Looking at this specific structure over here, you can see that this market actually reached below these previous wicks. It manipulated the lows before forming that automatic rally. So bias climax, a sign of weakness or shakeouts, um, automatic rally and the spring to the downside. A line connecting these highs could be your creek over there. I'm not gonna to speak too much about this. Bottom line is it's a manipulation of the lows and a breaker structure to the upside. Whichever way you wanna look at it, that's a reaccumulation. That's your reaccumulation picture, which was seen on the five minute time frame right over here. So I'm just gonna put this in replay mode and jump down to the five minute time frame. That's that reaccumulation picture. And what I have written over here, break of structure plus a pullback or a mitigation. Once this market broke above this zone, the bias climax on the automatic rally zone, once the market broke above it, this is where this pullback was considered a mitigation of a sell before buy institutional candle. So again, looking at the same picture on the five hour time, uh, five hour, five minute time frame, you can see that this is where we broke that structure and this market pulled back to this institutional candle. That's where these positions could have been taken to the upside. It's taking everything into account, these would have been phenomenal buy scenarios to the upside. You have now taken into account higher time frames in terms of the four hour imbalance fill, hand in hand with lower time frame structure on the four hour or the hourly time frame, then another hourly imbalance fuel, five minute reaccumulation, taking this to the upside. Now you have multiple different confirmations telling you that these positions are ready for you to look to execute them to the upside and take these trades into the level that you were looking at.
Now these are not, I'm not saying this bad risk to reward, but these are not the most amazing risk to rewards. But the whole point of hedging is that you don't have to look at phenomenal risk to rewards if you want to hedge this. If I want to buy this to the upside before selling it, I don't need to be looking at insane risk to rewards for these buy positions. If you were um, a little bit more advanced in these concepts and analyzing these from a little bit more advanced perspective, then you know your risk to rewards would have been very different because your stop losses wouldn't have been based on the larger institutional candles. It would have been based on other factors. So you would have been able to catch much better trades. I'm not, again, going to speak too much about that because that's not the purpose of this video. But that's where you could have been able to catch these buy positions to the upside, analyzing it from the higher time frame, taking it down. So again, this is where we saw a weekly zone for potential sells and we wanted to hedge it to that level. Hence why we looked at that four hour, sorry, the eight hour imbalance feel, then the hourly imbalance feel and zooming it to the same level under five minutes, it was very clear that that's where we formed the reaccumulation, the pullback mitigation of that institutional candle before going higher. Excellent. So that's, those are the buy scenarios over there, done. Those would have been the buy scenarios that you would have been able to take. Now let's go ahead and speak a little bit about the actual sell scenarios because these were the major trades that we were looking at on the weekly time frame. Again, I'm not going to um, speak too much about all of the schematics and everything that took place over there. We have certain agenda that we want to follow for this video. One of the things that I haven't spoken about a lot right now is the trend line manipulation because this played a massive role in taking these sell positions to the downside. This trend line manipulation, the idea behind trend line manipulation played a huge and a very important and it always does play a very important role in any of the trades that we execute. Um, well, majority of them at least. Looking at that same picture on the hourly or the four hour time frame, so the same imbalance that we were looking at on the weekly time frame on the four hour time frame, right before approaching that imbalance, we created equal highs. This is where this market is literally screaming, saying that there's a pool of liquidity above, making this imbalance, in my personal opinion, 10 times more valid. <laughs> Because now, right before the market fills in the imbalance, it's also going above all of these highs, manipulating all of these highs. My opinion makes it easier that it's going to potentially you know, drop lower. Um, so that is a big confirmation in my eyes, creating equal highs right before we approach the imbalance zone, filling the imbalance and then continue and lower. This is where, again, the lower time frame structure would come into play because I do not want to be looking at that same level on the four hour or the hourly time frame. I'm not really interested in what that weekly zone is going to tell me on the four hour time frame. And I'll tell you why. Because either way, my trades are not going to be executed on the four hour time frame. If I wanted to take trades based on this imbalance zone on the four hour time frame, my stop losses would have to be up there. I don't know about you, but I don't want to have a 95 pip stop loss. Okay, simple as that. So this is where I don't I don't really pay too much attention to necessarily what's happening on those higher time frames. I want to look at it on the hourly on the 15 minutes and, and see what type of structure we are creating at that imbalance level on the lower time frames because these are the time frames that I'll be able to have executions based on. Simple as that. This was um, an easy market to analyze. You could have actually even had certain positions up there if you're analyzing it on the forex.com data feed. Um, that's another point as well, by the way. In one of the um, one of the videos, there was a question. Um, someone asked, um, do you use FXCM or forex.com data feed and which one to use? Which is it better? What's the differences? The differences is these are two different brokers. Data feed is going to come from two different sources. Okay. The general difference between FXCM and forex.com is wherever you see a gap on FXCM, on forex.com, there wouldn't be any gap. There would be a full candle, but it would be an imbalance instead of a gap, which in theory, both of them are the same thing. So I personally find them interchangeable. I, I use FXCM um, kind of a little bit more than forex.com, if I want to be honest with you. So majorly my analysis is done on FXCM, but I would look at forex.com as well. These prices are potentially different to your brokers. The actual prices that you will get on any of these broker data feeds will be different to your broker. But the point is you don't want that difference to, to be too big or at least account for the difference um, that, that, the, that these are going to be showing you. Um, so it's not, it's not the biggest of deals to the actual trade execution, in my opinion. Uh, now, looking at this same picture on the 15 minute time frame, even if you were not looking to take trades up there or for whatever reason, you found it difficult to actually find where you would have entered. I'm not going to speak about where you could have entered, but I just want to again break down this market behavior and what took place, especially more than anything else at this specific level, because this was a very key area in this distribution, in this move to the downside. The reason behind that is because this is another redistribution within the same range. 
This is another drop base drop formation. This is where this market went sideways. This market started to go slow without a direction because that was an area that the institutions were distributing their positions again. That was an area that the market was being kept going sideways for more positions to be able to be executed on the sell side of things. Hence, this massive drop that we got after. And if that is a drop-based drop, if that is an area of supply, then it goes without saying that this market is going to be likely to react to that level before dropping further. So once this general move was seen, this is where things got confirmed to be able to look at those sell positions. Even if I didn't want to necessarily look at sell positions up there, where it got confirmed was where we started to form areas of supply and it was clear that the market was reacting off of those areas of supply and upon reaction from those areas of supply creating new lows breaking below previous structure points that is most definitely a powerful point so having a look at that same level at that same structure we can now put in a trend line to see where a lot of those positions that are likely to be manipulated are going to be and this is most likely a trend line that a lot of people were using. And the thing is about this specific um, trend line, I'm going to change it to a red line, uh, about this specific trend line, whether I was drawing it from up there and connecting, let's say, these highs, or whether I started it from where it was before and to connect these highs, it really doesn't make a difference where I draw that trend line. The bottom line is it's clear that there's liquidity above it's clear that there is liquidity above that trend line because whoever who wanted to sell it based on that trend line would have their stop losses above looking to take this lower. Hence, there's a lot of liquidity above it. So I can expect that this market is going to manipulate that trend line, is going to reach above it, and this is where I can look for my specific entry opportunities. Where is it likely to slow down at when it comes, into, when it comes above that trend line? And if I'm not mistaken, it was a five minute imbalance as far as I remember. There it is, yeah. So it was a 10 minute institutional candle looking at the same range, at the same picture. Again, we created an area of supply. The market dropped off, reacted off of that area of supply. Once it reacted off of that area of supply, it looked like everything was taken care of. A move down and a pullback, a move down and a pullback, created an institutional candle and absolutely dropped off. That is powerful to see. Looking at the same institutional candle on the five minute time frame, that's where things would get confirmed because there's this big imbalance straight after it. That makes that institutional zone, I'm going to say, a powerful level to want to go based on that. Um, that's the 50% of that imbalance and the, that's, that's where a lot of entries could have been. That's where, in my opinion, the most safe entries, the most safe trades would have come into play at that level. At that level where everything has been confirmed it's been confirmed that you are indeed looking at the right higher time frame zone and you can take positions to the downside from that level because that because you're looking at the right trend because the market has manipulated the trend line because the market has reacted off of the correct levels so on and so forth we're going to quickly recap on what we went through and um, this video as i said should have been recorded a little little while ago i'm going to say because these pictures were taken about three weeks ago i never got around to recording this um but uh, we looked at the weekly imbalance and we were looking at that weekly imbalance fill. Because we were looking at the higher time frame imbalance, we were hoping to be able to catch this to the upside. So buy it into that level and then look for those sell positions. So that's where we looked at the hourly time frame imbalance fill. Then we broke that down on the lower time frame as a form of a reaccumulation and multiple moves and pullbacks and moves and pullbacks into significant areas. Once the market approached our desired weekly level, on the lower time frames, we started to observe um, bearish structure. We started to observe areas of supply being created, drop-based drop formations, the market reacting off of those areas of supply, manipulating a trend line, and mitigating your final institutional candle. Simple as that. Now, there's a lot that's going to be happening over the next few days, especially for the US dollar. Obviously, we have the US presidential election results coming out not so long from now. But I hope you have gained value from this video. I hope this video is going to help you for your future analysis. If that is the case, do please press the like button down below. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe for more content. Um, I know the entire UK has officially moved into another one month lockdown starting tomorrow, starting Wednesday. Um, so I wish you all 
uh, the best. I hope you're all safe. I hope you're all healthy, as I say at the beginning of every single video. But I'm going to try my best to post two videos a week as opposed to one video a week during this next four weeks to come out with as much content for you all. So make sure you subscribe with the notification on to be able to get notified with each and every single video that's going to be posted. But with that being said, stay safe, stay healthy, stay smiling, and let's catch these pips. Let's go.